<laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if that's the right home for this, but um, I guess mostly what I wanted to talk about was you know, where, where OpenStack can fit into uh, development tool chains, operations tool chains, where do all of the projects that Racks, or not Rackspace, sorry, OpenStack has now, uh, where, where do they fall, how can you use them, uh, things along those lines. So the first thing I really wanted to start out with was just the sort of picture of like where OpenStack was and, and, and where it's heading. Uh, initially, we started out with these, the, the five main projects, right? Everyone knows about these, and these honestly still get talked about the most. Uh, these are, you know, compute as a service, object storage, image. Um, but wh where, what's been dominating a lot of the conversations the last year or so has been really all of these services, right? And so this is getting away from the core OpenStack into more of the cloud service model, right? They, they mentioned some of these up here before. This is database as a service. This is networking as a service. This is um, bare metal, uh, uh, cloud queues. I mean, there's all kinds, of, uh, all kinds of services now coming out of OpenStack. Uh, and this really isn't where it ends either. Uh, there are now uh, a number of, you know, there's, there's more than this. I, I couldn't even get all of them on here. I don't even know all of them, to be honest. But, there's a number of incubated projects or projects that people are trying to kick off right now, like, uh, like the Solom one, which is around CICD and application delivery, uh, or the uh, Taskflow one for doing uh, uh, workflows against OpenStack. Um, and then you've got the, all, of the, uh, all of the config management systems on the other side, which not only are being used to build OpenStack, right, to actually build and run OpenStack, they're also being consumed on top of OpenStack, and they're providing the provisioning layer for OpenStack, for instances on OpenStack. Uh, and in case of some of them, like Ansible, you've, they've also got orchestration in there as well. Uh, and to be honest, there's probably another ring on the outside of this, uh, like random tools that people have built, right? So like uh, StackTac, Rackspace uses pretty heavily, and um, the, uh, the, the guys from PayPal, converted Asgard from Netflix OSS into an OpenStack version, right? So there's all these tools that companies are building, and they're open source, and they're out there. Kind of hard to find, but they're there. So kind of where I wanted to go today was, was taking a look at some of those projects and figuring out where they, they fit into your tool chains as a developer, as an operations uh, um, person. So, I'm going to start out with defining DevOps uh, and the tool chains, um, for at least for the scope of this, of this talk. Uh, review of OpenStack practices. So uh, perhaps OpenStack won't directly help you in one way, but maybe you can follow the, uh, a practice of OpenStack. Uh, how OpenStack could help you uh, if it provides a specific service and what's missing, uh, which I'd really be interested if anyone has input on that part. So to get started, uh, I, going to loosely define the term DevOps. This is not a DevOps talk. Um, I'm not going to try and define that for you. Um, but is the, in the scope of this, of this talk, uh, it is the tool chains of dev development text, the tool chains of operations text, uh, they're changing, right? They're changing along these lines of where DevOps is taking them. So um, I try to find some, some good, like, what is DevOps? Uh, and I try to throw together some of these things. I found these on Google, uh, Google image search, but trying to take this idea of a developer and a sysadmin and turning them into like Superman, right? Everyone seems to think that DevOps is the answer. Uh, in reality, it's not, but, but what it is is uh, evolving their tool chains, right? So for developers, maybe this is uh, taking on some traditional uh, operational tasks, like uh, being on call for app like application deployments. Right? Maybe that's a, that's a new task that developers aren't used to. Uh, or maybe developers are getting involved in application deployment through something like Fabric, Capistrano, or any of the other uh, ones you could possibly use. Um, or quite possibly, they're getting involved in the infrastructure's code piece. So operations, uh, maybe, maybe you're using a config management system, uh, and developers are actually getting involved and building their, uh, getting involved in the, the infrastructure. For operations, maybe the, the evolution for them is actually starting to adhere to development principles. So along the same lines with, with something like Chef or Puppet is uh, treating infrastructure as code, 
and committing that code to source control, testing that code, uh, just like you would expect that your developer would do against your, your live production application, because essentially your infrastructure is, is like an application. Uh, uh, again, that's committing to source control, control for like your config management. Uh, this might be new tooling, right? I think Netflix is probably the poster child of this. And even though they're not OpenStack, uh, it, it, they're the best at sort of, they've home written a, a, a ton of tools uh, for working with Amazon, AWS, and EC2. Uh, and they've open sourced them because they needed these tools. So maybe part of what operations is evolving to is, uh, is developing internal tools. Uh, or, and maybe operations are getting into application performance, right? Before, uh, maybe they only cared about infrastructure performance. What does my CPU lo load look like? Uh, which is kind of starting to become less important uh, in application response time, application performance is becoming a little, more, a little more of a goal. And of course, there is the business evolution as well, uh, which is breaking down the barriers between the two teams. All right, so let's, let's start defining the dev tool chain a little bit, and let's see where OpenStack fits in. Uh, you have to forgive my simplistic keystone boxes, um, but they work. So uh, to start with, uh, there's obviously the develop phase. You're going to be working on an application. You're going to be developing against it, uh, which will generally lead to some sort of testing, unit testing, uh, integration testing, smoke testing. That's sort of a, a cycle back and forth until you have something you're happy with, right? Um, this may move to the commit phase. Commit your code, um, get uh, SVN, whatever it might be. You're storing it, uh, which will generally actually kick off another testing run, right? Like you're going to test your production code. Um, at some point, you'll reach a build stage, right? You'll either package your code up, maybe you'll tar it up, maybe you'll build an RPM or a Debian out of it. Um, or if you're like OpenStack, you'll just, well, actually, they use tar, but you know, they'll ship it to GitHub and, and let people download it. Um, uh, you may artifact it. You may place it in some central place where all of your app servers can reach, reach it. Uh, and if, uh, finally, you'll deploy that code, right? And then once that code is up and running, uh, we'll generally have some sort of application monitoring after that fact, uh, and followed by issue tracking. Uh, this is obviously a, a pretty simplistic view of a development tool chain. Uh, it's going to change for every company. Uh, people are going to do de deployment completely different. Uh, some people are going to follow the formation model, or excuse me, the template model with something like CloudFormation, Cloud Foundry, Heat. I mean, you can kind of name those off. Um, some people aren't going to do artifact or even building. Um, Hopefully everyone is committing their code. That's probably something everyone's doing. So how can we follow OpenStack, right? So how can, we, how can we think about how OpenStack does things and what OpenStack's providing us? So I'm, I'm marking these boxes with a star if we can follow uh, an OpenStack methodology, right? And I'll mark the boxes with a little O if OpenStack's providing something directly for you. So a star, uh, OpenStack's not gonna help you develop. Right, necessarily, OpenStack's not gonna write code for you. Um, OpenStack's not gonna do any of that, but you could follow OpenStack's methodology. That they have a very, very tight uh, Python standard, right? Every project is Python. Every project must go through, every commit must go through PEP8. Um, uh, test, right, lint test to make sure it fits. Uh, they have very, very strong Python standards. Um, maybe you can follow that model. But what OpenStack will provide you uh, are language bindings, right? Um, actually, we talked about this before, and there was a question. OpenStack may not directly provide that, uh, but things like Fog, things like uh, JClouds, uh, those are going to help you integrate with, with OpenStack. And that directly affects your development. That directly affects your application. So for testing, uh, again, OpenStack's not going to necessarily write your tests for you. Um, it's probably, I'm not sure if testing as a service is ever going to become a thing. Based on the last six months, it probably will. Someone will come up with testing as a service for OpenStack, I'm sure. Um, but you could follow OpenStack's methodology, which is uh, all their tests are in um, talks, at least currently they are. Um, but there's also a new project that's been spun up recently called OpenCafe. Um, and that, that does fall under the Stack4. It is on GitHub under Stackforge. It's not an actual OpenStack project, um, but it has been built around teams uh, using it for OpenStack. I think it was Rackspace that did it. Don't, don't quote me on that. Um, so there is a project under Stackforge to help you with testing, 
right? It is not testing as a service. It is not, uh, it is, it is not Travis CI for OpenStack, uh, but you may be able to use it for your company. Uh, as far as the commit workflow goes, again, OpenStack's not directly going to help you there, but they do follow a pretty strong uh, Garrett gate uh, before you can get in, before you can commit code into it, right? So it's more than just uh, code, uh, commit, and deploy. They are code, uh, try and commit, right? Get code reviewed, make sure people are happy with it before it actually gets, uh, gets pushed in. Uh, so OpenStack's not going to help you there, but they, follow, they have a pretty good methodo methodology that you could follow as well. Uh, as far as building your code, OpenStack follows the, uh, the TAR model, essentially. They, they TAR up their package and they throw it on Launchpad. Um, that's, uh, um, if you wanted to go that way, you can. Uh, I presume most people don't, but uh, you certainly could. As far as building and artifacting go, it's really been up to the OS distros, right? It's been up to Ubuntu and Red Hat to kind of do that for OpenStack. Um, but TAR is, is certainly a build methodology. Uh, as far as artifacting goes, um, OpenStack uh, essentially follows the Launchpad. It places that TAR file on Launchpad. That is your central artifact repository. So lastly, or at least with the direct tool chain, would be like uh, deployment. Uh, OpenStack will, however, help you with uh, application deployment. Uh, this is, uh, there's a couple of things going on right here, but uh, right now around deployment. Uh, Heat's probably the most well known. Uh, it is essentially the orchestration layer for OpenStack. Uh, it, uh, it's probably coming of age about now. Uh, I think people are going to start actually using it and deploying it. Um, but there's some new efforts underway, uh, one of which would be Solem, uh, which is more focused around container-based application deployment, uh, as well as integration with CI and CD tools. Um, that's been one of my uh, biggest complaints so far, which, which we'll talk about later, um, is not having good integration with the uh, CI servers like Jenkins and the other ones out there. Uh, so there are, I would, I would say, two uh, there are two OpenStack projects to help with application deployment right now. Um, Solem being very, very, very young, and I think was pitched like a month ago. So I don't know if I'd use that in production yet. Um, as far as application monitor goes, right, uh, OpenStack's not going to help you there yet. Uh, but Solometer exists. Uh, you can look at Solometer's code. Look at how they're, uh, uh, they're monitoring essentially OpenStack itself. Um, and you might be able to use that methodology in your application. And issue tracking, they, they follow the launch pad. You know, they use launch pad pretty heavily. So that's, that's what I would say uh, how OpenStack may, may not help your, uh, your development tool chain. There's only four direct, uh, four direct places where I feel like it's going to help you, and, and, but you could follow the methodology everywhere if you really wanted to. So what about ops? Um, so ops is a little less of a, uh, of a perfect flow. Um, it's more of kind of like discrete, um, discrete you know, elements of a tool chain. And so these would be like you know, inventory, what machines do I have? Um, uh, what images am I using, right? Uh, am I using some sort of config management to build my images? Uh, obviously, application deployment, it's, traditionally it was an operations job. Uh, remote execution, once I have machines up and running and I want them to do something, uh, something different, remote execution, orchestration, perhaps I am following the, the template or orchestrated model, um, monitoring both uh, application and, and infrastructure monitoring, issue tracking and identity, so controlling uh, who has access to what, right? So first up with inventory, I would start with saying OpenStack does provide you that. Right? Open, OpenStack provides the Nova API. Uh, OpenStack provides you an inventory of your machines that are running uh, that you can get via the API, you can get via CLI, you can get uh, via the uh, dashboard if you wanted to. Uh, OpenStack does provide that for you. Um, it also does that for images. It does provide the Glance API to tell me what images I have, uh, how I'm gonna boot them. Um, it doesn't necessarily provide you building images um, but there are a lot of tools out there to, to do so, and there's a lot of instruction. For config management, OpenStack isn't going to do that for you. Uh, that's, that's being left up to some of the other providers, like Chef and Puppet. Uh, but 
Chef and Puppet are both heavily used for deploying OpenStack. Um, so if you wanted to uh, figure out how to use Chef or Puppet in some really advanced ways, uh, maybe you should you know, have a look at the Puppet Manifest for OpenStack or the Chef cookbooks for OpenStack. Uh, they're on StackForge, like they're all there. StackForge, by the way, is github.com slash StackForge. It seems to be the place where people are just putting OpenStack-related projects or code uh, that could be useful for multiple people in the community. Uh, as far as deployments go, we mentioned Heat before. Uh, as far you know, if you want to get into uh, template-based orchestration, OpenStack will provide that for you as a service. Uh, and Solom, again, is getting into this uh, container-based application deployment. Uh, I just skipped over remote execution because OpenStack doesn't, it's not gonna provide that for you. Uh, orchestration, Heat does provide that. Uh, as far as monitoring goes, it will provide the, uh, it can provide some infrastructure monitoring from the, uh, from the OpenStack side, not necessarily within the guest level, uh, but within OpenStack uh, the, from the hypervisor's point of view. Uh, issue tracking, again, they use Launchpad uh, and identity. Uh, they do provide the identity API uh, and integration with LDAP systems. So what's missing? Uh, I, I would start off by saying OpenStack is missing AWS level integration, right? So I don't necessarily mean AWS compatibility, um, although there's certainly people in the community who think it should be, but I mean AWS level integration. Like when I go look at a chef cookbook on the, just some generic chef cookbook, there's usually an AWS recipe, right, for dealing with block storage. Uh, I, th I feel like we're missing that uh, with OpenStack right now. Uh, or if I go to um, website XYZ, whatever it might be, generally speaking, I can hook it to my AWS account uh, and like use that as an inventory system. Uh, and I feel like we're missing that with OpenStack right now, AWS integration with a bunch of third-party tools and sites. Uh, OpenStack inventory integration, I feel like it's missing. There's a lot of uh, this kind of goes in with AWS level one, but there's a lot of internal tools who can't talk to OpenStack to determine um, you know, uh, how many machines I have, uh, anything along those lines. OpenStack is really trying to be everything, um, but a lot of people have IPAM internally that uh, they want to continue to use uh, that, that cannot talk to OpenStack. So uh, CI/CD tools integration was a big one. Uh, uh, Jenkins, for instance, doesn't know how to talk to OpenStack, right? There's not a Jenkins plugin to talk to OpenStack. I can't say uh, build, you know, test this, build an instance uh, on OpenStack and, and run this test code and then destroy that instance when you're done. Um, I can do that with some Chef stuff, but I don't really know of anyone else uh, that's, that's doing that right now. Um, and that's what Solom, part of what Solom is trying to fix, uh, is integrating with um, some of the CI CD tools out there right now, uh, as well as provide the application delivery. And then workflow, I would say, is honestly probably one of the biggest things missing as well. Um, think of Amazon's simple workflow service or, um, uh, you know, something along those lines. If I want to be able to uh, say, spin up an instance, download this code from Swift, or download these files, process it, uh, and then destroy everything when I'm done. I can't really do that with OpenStack right now. Uh, that said, there is a project underway called TaskFlow to, to get this done, right? So uh, I think that the, the CI CD tools and the workflow uh, were recognized as problems, and, and people are trying to uh, figure it out. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. That's, that's what I got. Um, if you want to contact me, you can uh, rack ninja on Twitter. Uh, my email address up is there, and, and these will go up on SlideShare uh, after this if anyone's interested. Uh, and then uh, if you do look at the slides online, there's a lot of there's links for some of these resources, some of the things we're talking about. So there's plenty of time left. Um, if anyone has any questions, go for it or comments. I'd love to know what anyone thinks OpenStack is missing, if we start an open discussion on that. Uh, yeah? I don't know. I think he's going to try and bring a mic. Hi. 
Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Hasher from Microsoft. And um, in regards to the last uh, slide that you presented, the missing CI, CD uh, topic, um, I um, want to understand if there is any initiative um, you know, or any venue that I can go to to understand, for example, um, you know, some of the standard practices that might be in existence around building such, uh, you know, the CI uh, infrastructure for uh, OpenStack. That's something that, you know, uh, our team at Microsoft is working on right now. Mm. And um, I've been attending, you know, some uh, of these test tracks that are offered at this summit. But I wanted to understand if there was a group of individuals or if, if there's an um, internal team that I can refer to with such questions. Like within OpenStack? Within OpenStack. I think that there is. I, unfortunately, I don't know who they are. Um, but I believe that there's a talk at some point this week uh, talking about their testing infrastructure. Uh, I have seen some mention of it. Um, that talks about the entire workflow, yes. right? Git to Garrett to uh, the Jenkins infrastructure. Um, I'm sh I, I'd be very interested as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Uh, sorry. This is Lakshmi from IBM. Uh, I'm wondering where would you place in this list uh, tools that would help, uh, say, rolling upgrades or upgrades of an application or some canary testing, things like that. Um, well, as far as, so can you say that again? I, I heard upgrade of applications. What else was there? Uh, also some kind of, yeah, let's say rolling up, rolling update of an application. That's a typical like uh, DevOps kind of scenario where sure. you want to continuously uh, keep yeah. your application updated. Yeah, yeah. so should, should OpenStack help with that or? Uh, uh, no, or, so my, my question is here, do you think it's covered in one of those tools or? I would personally probably consider that a workflow. Workflow, okay. Right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, but that's a workflow at a slightly higher level than what OpenStack may be involved in. So maybe that's a really a combination of how you're deploying it plus a workflow engine, right? Um, uh, application upgrades, to me, are, is, is, is some sort of workflow, right? Uh, uh, do something. Uh, spin up new instances, maybe grab my new code. Okay, everything looks good. Uh, add a floating IP. Whatever that workflow, it's multiple steps. Um, so I would consider workflow being the, the primary thing that's missing. Um, but if you're using something like Heat to deploy your infrastructure and application, all of a sudden workflow is not really missing, right? Um, if you're using a template engine to, de to deploy all of it, I redeploy point the IPs to the new one, and you're, you're up and going, right? Uh, it's that easy. Uh, OK, thank you. Yeah. Any other thoughts, questions? There's one in the back. Uh, my name is Adarsh. Uh, does OpenStack uh, has anything regarding closed loop uh, DevOps? What's that? Closed loop uh, back, uh, feedback from mechanism from the production back to the developer. Does OpenStack? Um, I would say OpenStack at its core does. Uh, there's a number of people developing against it. Uh, when something breaks, essentially new bugs get opened, and, and people, uh, um, you know, people work on it. I, I think because it's an open source project and a massive one at that, it's probably not as tight of integration as you would see inside of your own company. Um, but I, I don't know if you can follow their methodologies, right? Open source projects are a completely different animal. Uh, you might be able to, to follow the way OpenStack does it, um, but it's probably a little too slow uh, and possibly a little too loose uh, to really follow that. Um, I wouldn't say that there is a very a, a loop that you could follow from OpenStack, I, unless you follow the standard sort of like commit, deploy, bug, fix bug, you know, release in six months type of thing. So. Uh, anything else? Questions, comments? 
Cool. Well, I'll let you guys go. I think they probably have beer or something at the other place by now. So I'm not going to keep you guys too long.